So I worked for PwC as an IT consultant for almost two years, one year and 10 months to be more accurate. If my happiness level was represented in a graph, it would look like this. This is where I started my job search and this is where I switched to DXC technology. In this video, I want to walk through this graph with you and really tell you what happened during my time there and I'll tell you everything, no sugarcoating, only the truth. The truth even PwC doesn't want you to know Maybe. So hopefully you can be prepared if you ever worked at PwC. A little disclaimer here before we start. I worked at PwC Canada and this is based on my experience only. So let's get started. So I started working at PwC in January 2018. My first week was exactly how I expected it to be. I walked through the doors, sat on the couch in the lobby and waited for one of my colleagues to come to get me. He showed up like five minutes later and the first thing he said was, Hi, how are you? And the second thing was, are you available to go to Chicago next week? And my eyes were like, <laughs> heck yes, I'm available. I signed at PwC for this. The first phase of my PwC career had officially started, which I will call the honeymoon phase. In this phase, I traveled a lot and met lots of people. First, I went to Chicago where I visited the Workday office to get my Workday certification. If you don't know, Workday is an enterprise resource planning system, which is like a giant software that helps companies manage their HR and finance processes easier. It was a certification I needed to be enrolled in projects and help my clients implement Workday in their businesses. I wasn't too thrilled to be back in class and having exams just one month after graduating, but I was learning something new, so I was excited, especially after PwC told me I had 75 bucks to spend every day on food. I think that was my favorite part. And since I don't eat breakfast usually and lunchtime was limited, I couldn't spend too much of that money in that first part of the day. So I always had like over $50 to spend in the evening. So with my friend Kelvin, who was a Deloitte consultant I met at the training, we spoiled ourselves trying all sorts of restaurants in Chicago. After passing the workday exam, I came back home in Montreal only to be flown to Toronto a couple of days later for our yearly team meeting where we bonded with the rest of the PwC team in Canada. Since we have offices all over Canada, PwC organized a yearly event where we had the chance to meet everyone. I think that it was valuable to collaborate better on projects. All of this was new to me. I was not even thinking about work, consulting or clients. I was just having fun, traveling, eating at fancy places and meeting new people and growing my network. If that wasn't enough, my manager came to me after a couple of weeks and asked me if I wanted to get two additional workday certifications. So I thought, so you're asking me to travel again, eat at fancy restaurants again and be a more competitive candidate? Of course, yes. So I went back to Chicago for my second certification and then a couple of weeks later went to San Francisco for the first time to get my third certification. While I was there, I had the chance to meet, visit Google's campus and went to Oakland to watch Golden State versus Lakers. And at this point, I was just grateful I was working at PwC. Not only did I work for a company with enough budget to make events like the one in Toronto, but also send me abroad to get additional certifications and make me a more valuable candidate. Ultimately, I knew these certifications were mine. I became a more valuable employee, like I said, which made me proud. I was enjoying myself a lot, but little did I know what was coming next. Traveling and getting certifications are a lot of fun, but this is not the day-to-day -day reality I had at PwC during my time there. I understood around four months in that PwC is an international firm, yes, but operates most of the time locally, especially in Canada. Meaning, no, there weren't many opportunities to get shipped to, I don't know, Switzerland, for example, for a project. Those were rare occasions. Most of the time, we'll get local clients and travel by bus like 20 minutes to their office. So I told myself, well, I think it's good for now. I guess it's okay, but I didn't even get this chance. <laughs> I was still new. I couldn't get any actual project yet. I had to shadow my colleagues and do basic admin tasks. I told my manager about this and he kept saying, you need to be proactive and ask around for opportunities. And I noticed this sentence was the most famous sentence people used at the firm. And I realized a bit later that it was their excuse when they knew they didn't have a lot of work available. So that's what I did. Every week, I would email the whole department and ask them if there was anything I could do. I told them I had three certifications and that I got a little bit of experience shadowing other colleagues, but no one would ever respond with an actual task. Like for example, hey, so I'm doing this for this client. I don't want to do it. And since you're new, you need training. Here it is, like go and figure it out, right? I didn't even had this opportunity. 
At first, I didn't understand. I thought, man, if I was them, I would give everything to that new guy and decrease my workload and have some free time. It's only now, like three years later, that I'm a senior consultant working on multiple projects that I understood why they never gave me anything. When you've been working with clients for several months and have complex problems and configurations, it will take too long to explain to a newbie with no experience. You would just rather do it yourself. It, it would be faster than uh, giving it to, to someone new. So because of that, I stayed around five to six months without an actual project. And I named this phase the bench phase. When you're on the bench, it means you're not needed for now. And you just need to wait until a new project is signed. And don't worry, it's normal to be on the bench sometimes in a consulting firm, especially in the big four, for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but not six months. And days were long and I was not feeling challenged. There was even a point where I questioned if PwC was the right firm for me. I was still fresh out of school. What I needed most right now was to learn valuable skills and become a more competitive candidate. Not looking over the window and go through my emails all day, right? Yes, I had three certifications already, but I won't get practical client experience if I don't use them. I was even thinking about my long-term career, where I was headed, and at that point, PwC was not providing what I was expecting expecting from them. So I waited and waited. I was still doing basic admin and Excel work. Nothing meaningful really. If that wasn't enough, my manager reached out to me one day saying he noticed my billing hours were low. Billing hours, if you didn't know, are hours worked on actual projects in a given week. Those are hours clients pay the firm for. So let's say you work 40 hours every week. You want most of these hours to be hours worked on a project not doing admin stuff I was doing mostly all day, right? The more billing hours you have, the more money you bring to PwC and the happier they get. If you're not billing hours, well, PwC is not making money, which is not a position you wanna be in for too long. And you'll see a little bit later why. There was just one problem. You don't control this. You don't choose which project you're put on. You don't choose how many hours you allocate every week to a project. You don't decide anything. So. I found my manager didn't make any sense coming to me, asking me to build more if they didn't give me a project in the first place. <laughs> and I realized this was a common problem back in the days at PwC. They would hire too many people because they thought projects were coming soon. Still, when signing clients took more time than expected, well, all these employees will stay on the bench, which is precisely what happened to me. And in this bench phase, I also understood that, yes, working at a big firm meant lots of resources and budget, like I said before, still, it also meant management, communication, and processes problem. And because it's a big firm, it's harder to find solutions and implement them because of the many layers of people in place. Thankfully, though, I got past that. After many months on the bench, PwC finally signed two significant clients, which meant two new projects I would be enrolled in. I will name this phase the consulting life. In this phase, I went to my client's office many times, did a few presentations and learned a lot about the workday ERP I was certified in. I also realized no matter what training you take, it's nothing compared to the real work. Despite having three certifications, I struggled at first to understand my client's problems and giving relevant solutions. Training stays theoretical, just like university client's problems were real, so I had to rely on my more experienced colleagues a lot to help. My colleagues were great, don't worry about that. It's one of the things I would never say about PwC, like back in my days, because I don't know if it's still the case right now, my colleagues were just awesome. But I have to say, the vibe you get when you go to your client's office, suit and tie and everything, I was feeling powerful and knowledgeable when the client came to me with questions. These guys were like 50 years old coming to a 22 year old boy to solve problems worth millions of dollars. For the first time, I felt like a real consultant. I had to learn how to talk to clients, how to present information efficiently, and more importantly, how to explain complex problems in simple terms, which I knew was a great transferable skill no matter what job I will have in the future. And that was the work I wished I had from the beginning. So I was happy to finally have a taste of it. I wish I could tell you this was my last phase at PwC and that I learned so much I became consultant of the month and I lived happily ever after. I wish I could say that. But the reality was far from it. At the end of my first year at PwC, I witnessed the first wave of layoffs. One day I woke up and saw an email saying they had terminated around 10 people, randomly. The reason? Budget and project problems. 
We were just too many in the department without enough projects. Bench life is not a good life, like I told you, believe me. I think that was my lowest point, I think, at PwC. I still had this dreamy image of a perfect firm that takes care of us, where I traveled, got new certifications, got the chance to meet new people and work on challenging projects. Then I saw the harsh reality. PwC is just a business. If profits are not where they want them to be, they will cut people like nothing based on metrics, billable hours, and other performance indicators. It can sound naive, but I really never thought that would happen. From the vibe I was getting at the beginning when I started at PwC, man, I thought I was part of a family. I, I thought I was part of a firm cares about their employees that they will never <laughs> lay them off. Man, that sounds so naive. But yeah, all those firms are still businesses at the end of the day. If they don't perform, they will make those decisions. I was still in that unicorn world and that event brought me back to earth. I had to focus on being a good employee, prove my value and work hard if I didn't want to be next. This phase I call reality check. No matter how much you love a firm or how much you feel loved, the reality is you still need to perform every day, bring revenue, and be among top employees if you want to stand out, get promoted, and stay within the firm. After that first layoff, I felt that the dynamic changed a little. It wasn't like before, and the culture changed a lot. I think everyone was shocked and feared for their jobs. This was when I started my second year at PwC. I was still enrolled in those two projects I mentioned earlier, so I kept working and learning as much as I could. And shortly after, my last PwC phase started, that I will call awakening. I did a lot of retrospection in this phase. It's been a year since I graduated, so I thought about my career, what I learned during my first year at PwC, hint, not that much, and where I was headed. I took some vacation time to Thailand and meditated a lot there. I started asking myself if IT consulting was really the job for me, if I had to switch to another firm maybe, to another industry, or if I just should stay. I don't know if it was luck or the stars aligning, but when I came back from Thailand, a few events helped me realize what next move I should take. To give you context, I read approximately one book a month. Luckily, I read So Good They Can't Ignore You. Let me show you. Not sure if you can see it, but yeah, this is one of the best books I read uh, so far in my career. So if you didn't read it, you, you should. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, I read this book during the time I was contemplating if I should leave IT consulting. And in the book, Carl Newport explains that what matters most in your career is your skills. They needed to be rare and valuable and that it's normal if you don't like or if you struggle in your first few jobs out of university. Simply because you still don't have valuable skills that will give you all the work conditions you dream about. It's only by getting rare and valuable skills that one day you can land an opportunity where you will dictate the conditions that you like. For example, working hours, salary, autonomy, etc. At that exact moment, my friend Kelvin, who I mentioned earlier in the video, got a new job at DXA Technology and told me about his projects, his remote work, and his salary. He was a recent grad, just like me, but was already a senior consultant there. He was already leading projects. He could work from anywhere in the world, and he was making double his last salary. So I was impressed, but I thought he was just an exception. And after a few Google searches, I discovered Workday was a rare and valuable skill that Cole Newport was talking about. A skill that was needed a lot across North America, but also in Europe. And I possessed a rare and valuable so I realized I possessed a rare and valuable skill all this time and I didn't know about it. I was much more worthy in terms of skills that I was aware of. And this was when I decided I will stay in IT consulting, especially within the workday niche and take advantage of the skills I have been acquiring to boost my career even more. So I knew I had to quit PwC. They were not signing clients at the rate I needed to grow in my career. I was still a support consultant and I did not see any future where I could lead a project as soon as I wanted. We were just too many consultants and not enough projects. My rare and valuable skill wasn't used at full potential. If you want to know more about how I realized I needed to quit PwC and the crazy story about how I landed DXC technology in the US despite being in Canada, I made a video explaining everything and I'll put a link 
I think here and in the description. My experience at PwC wasn't always positive, I have to say, but I don't think you can have a positive experience from start to finish in any firm you work for. You will have highs and lows, but I'm still grateful I worked at PwC where I had the chance to meet amazing people, but more importantly, got the chance to be certified and introduced to the workday world where I strive right now. I had the opportunity to understand how an office works, its politics, how to handle problems in a team, how to communicate with my managers, and how to always show a positive image of yourself. I had the opportunity to make a lot of mistakes a new grad had to make in his first job out of university. And it's because of that experience that I am now thriving at DXC. I truly believe it. I'm pretty sure my experience is a lot different than a lot of people. So if you worked at PwC, how was your experience? Let me know in the comment section. And if you want to work for PwC, then go for it. I'm sure you will learn a lot. It will have a positive impact on your career, but be prepared and be ready for challenges you may have never encountered yet. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button. It helps this channel grow and gives me a great indicator if I should create more videos like this one. Subscribe for more consulting and career content, and I'll see you soon. Ciao.